palatial captain's cabin. It's a naval tradition. The captains do get a bit of luxury and a bit of personal space here. A commodity in short supply on HMS Cavalier or on any destroyer. Look at that, nice wood finish, little desk lamp over there. But this speaking trumpet is important because this shows that there's no downtime for the captain. He can be in here snoozing, but when something happens, he's got to respond. There's no one else, you know, can make the big decisions. So. If something did happen, he would run up to the bridge if it was World War II, but if it was after the war, if it was in the Cold War, he might just go to the operations room. That was where the heart of the ship was. And it's not too long a commute. Check this out over here. Not too bad. Just through here, you have the operations room. This is where the information is flooding in, and this is where the decisions that the captain and the senior officers make can then be dispersed all over the ship. Hey Richard, how are you doing? Hey Dan, how are you? Welcome to the operations room. Thank you very much. Great in here, isn't it? It's absolutely fantastic. One thing we have to remember that this particular room was post-1957, so the refit during the war, it would have been a lot smaller and called the operations information office. But you know, they still it's still a place, a sort of nerve center, isn't it? I mean, what I love about it is this is a sort of primitive so sort of surface, you know, people have now digital surface devices, but this is a primitive surface because you'd plot everything on here, friendly assets, enemy assets, uh, and then and then you could move it along like this. So it's a sort of, uh, the rolling picture is maintained. It's very dynamic. And there's information everywhere, isn't there? There's radar, there's all sorts of other plots you can make. On this particular screen, someone would have to learn how to write backwards. They'd go behind here and they'd write backwards so the rest of the, pe the, rest of the crew in this room could understand what was going on. Missile zones, safe lanes, things like like that it is just teeming with information like you say information information and that's a critical thing up there just behind me we've got another plotting table there and above me you can see there's an absolute plethora of means of communication communication for every part of cavalier especially over on there the most important part of that stage was the bridge so the communication with the bridge so it just shows you how critical this particular room was amazing you could control everything from in here couldn't you fire control the ships response mechanisms engine room steering actually speaking of communication check this out this is the coding office one of the most top secret areas probably the most top secret area on the ship where the where the information from outside from the Admiralty, from political authorities, even intercepted enemy information could be decoded in there. Very few people were allowed to enter that room. It's exciting in there. And if you walk around here, we can see it's all about navigation back here. Navigation, of course, was absolutely critical. And again, we can't forget during World War II, navigation was all about really the skill of the guy who was the navigator. So this is one we would find the navigations officer uh, plotting movement of submarines on there and of course the actual reacting to the tactical threat. So making sure the ship was positioned in the correct place at making all sure times. Making sure the ship didn't hit the green stuff or the yellow stuff, that's the thing you got. I mean these guys were using celestial navigation, no GPS. They were using good old fashioned, I mean look how old that makes you feel seeing that. I learned how to navigate with one of those. Just showing your age there, Dan. I'm showing my age, it's depressing. Right, let's go and lab. This is a great room, come and check this out. The ASDIC room, this is, uh, ASDIC is sonar. At the beginning of the war, ships like this did not have any radar, they had any sonar. They were basically ill prepared for the U-boat, the submarine threat. By the end of the war, they had this piece of kit, sonar. You could fire a sonic pulse, hit an underwater object, it would come back. That allowed you to plot it on there. You could then drop the depth charge, depth charge off the back and destroy those enemy submarines. And by the end of the war, the Battle of the Atlantic had been won decisively by the Allies because of using machines like this, like radar. And it gave the German submarines a very hard time. Indeed, by the end of the war, it's extremely dangerous to be a German submariner. It just shows for us, doesn't it, how we take an tour around Cavalier, how absolutely, what a game changer all this technical equipment was. I mean, it, it was literally a game changer, it was decisive. At the beginning of the war, ships like this were the prey. By the end of the war, ships like this were the super predators.